All right, so here we are. In the last video, we talked about the network, basic components of the network and cybersecurity. Uh, what's the disconnect? So why do people and companies get hacked? And then we talked about managed detection and response and what it is. If you haven't watched it, just go back and watch this video. It's very important. In this video, this is basically an interactive demonstration of the capabilities of an MDR. And then in the next video, we're going to talk about uh, why use it on MDR and the summary, right? So let's get let's get right into it. In here, I have a hacker machine. So this is my hacker bot, basically. And I also have a victim. So this is my victim here. This is going to be my Windows machine. And then I have different pieces of the MDR, as you can see. So this is an alerts uh, dashboard for um, getting all the logs and all the good stuff. This is an alert using Suricata uh, engine network intrusion detection system. As, as you can see, all the systems are A-OK. -okay. You have some events flow and some, some alerts in here. Um, no emergency alerts, uh, no remote connections. Uh, you have uh, one RDB connection, which is my RDB connection that I'm doing right now. Um, we also can classify different types of remote connections like TeamViewer, Corporate violation, we have a few couple of things, no big deal, less encrypt um, certificates, but and we also have a password detected and encrypted, which is mine. <laughs> so not too much stuff. This stuff would be reported at the end of the, the reporting cycle, right? So, and then we have emergency drill downs, scanners, downloads, and so on. So this is kind of like the alerts section of it. We also have here Office 365 dashboard that tells us a lot about 365. So for example, files, logins, failed logins, GOIP hopping, for example, impersonation, uh, risky sign-ins, and all of that good stuff. So measure all of that. We have an events dashboard in here where we can classify all the events. We also have a um, discover here where we can build queries and analyze the traffic more granularly and uh, we have also a report section in here so i'm just showing you in a nutshell kind of different parts of the nvr and then we have a management system so this is our internal management system and this is the secret sauce of rhino cyber security so this is where we collect all the alerts inside of a network from different parts of the network and then we have two pieces, the A, our AI that works really hard on classifying false positives and being able to mark them. And then whatever is not evaluated is followed up by our technical expertise in here and then uh, classified as, uh, as we go. So these are the different components of the MDR. So now let's do some hacking. So the first thing that on the agenda is to create uh, a Trojan, right? So as the hacker, that's exactly what I'm going to do. So I have all the scripting here. So it's going to be a 64 bit Trojan put it as port 5001, right? And then it's creating the Trojan. And now that I'm doing this, the second step would be just to create a listener. So I'm going to create the listener, uh, same port right there. Now it is creating a listener. Now on the victim side, so I'm going to make this a little bigger. Um, this is the victim, and as you can see uh, in here, I have a shared drive, right? So this is a shared drive that is uh, sharing accounting clients, inventory, as well as sales and all the other stuff. And then I got some pretty important documents in here. And okay, so now that I created the listener from the hacker's perspective, now I can, through a phishing at attack, I can send it to the victim. And the victim would probably go into a URL, so it would be an external URL or an external IP address. In this case, I have an internal IP address, so it's going to be inventory.exe. And as you can see, it already downloaded my file. And then when the user clicks open the file and then run, nothing happens from the side of the victim. However, if I go into my hacker, then I already have a session and I can do a few things. Uh, I can actually get IDs and I'm on that desktop who says info, for example, and then get the computer. Now, all of this is automated, right? So um, usually when you download malware, there's different stages of malware uh, and they all do something different. 
And the main reason why they do that is to be able to obfuscate and hide the malware. I'm doing it. This is a proof of concept. So it's I'm doing everything manual so you can see the interaction and so on. I can also do a few things so uh, I can get system, right? So I'm going to get system and automatically the hacker tool. So this is Meterpreter and Metasploit is going to try to get into the uh, local administrator of the computer and sure I did. So if I do uh, get UID, then you can see that now I'm authority. From here, it's a piece of cake. I can run, for example, a recon script. The malware will run this type of scripts and these are all PowerShell scripts to be able to collect information and dump it into local files on the hacker side, right? So I'm dumping passwords and dumping all kinds of stuff. If you look at the MDR and a, I do a refreshing here, you'll see right away that Rhino malware possible Metasploit payload common construct was already alerted into the system. Uh, you can see an executable as well. If I go down, then you will be able to see that. And then I can do a follow up or raise an investigation ASAP on this. I can see the IP address of the destination where this happened. And also I can see what files were downloaded uh, through HTTP into this machine. Right. So you can see here, this is the effective machine and it went through uh, also this server right so right away the mdr is doing its job now if i look at the alerts via email i can see here that also the mdr detected this malware this trojan right so this is the possible metasploit payload and so we alerted on that as well if i go back i'm going to stop this for a second i can i can do a few things so for example i can and this is how bad it is so i can uh load kiwi so Kiwi is Mimikatz, right? So Kiwi, uh, it's a new name for Mimikatz, all the old Mimikatz. And from here, I can do creds all, right? And then I'll be able to dump right away the NTLM from the computer. And not only that, but also run, let's say, a hash dump on the machine. And, it, uh, and then I have all the keys for the administrator, guest, default account, uh, and so on. And yeah, so I can pretty much dump everything into uh the hacker machine and you can see observe right away that it was detected by the mdr the last thing is i can get into a shell for example and then now i can see where i am oh 1632 so <laughs> i can crawl into the different uh, folders for the victim and uh, install malware the next thing we're going to do on the agenda is going to do some scanning so i have a little tool here let's see an rdp scan so i'm going to do that right away um, since i'm already connected to the network so doing that i'm initiating a uh, rdp scan to see if there are any desktop software installed on different computers and you can see that i have hosts that are up on port 3389 uh, and then i'm going to also do a full scan of the network so initiate a module so I'm going to do it with sudo. There you go. Initiating module. This is what a hacker would typically do, which is scan the network once they're in. And we'll see how the uh, MDR is able to collect information from it right away. And I heard a ding. So if I go back to my email, you can see right away that there's a scan going on inside of the network. Right. So I know right away that a hackers inside of the network or something is going on that is scanning the network and that's not a good thing uh now if i refresh this this is this has auto refresh but i'm just going to refresh it right now and you can see that it was a nmap this is an rdp connection attempt from nmap on the network and you can see here the attempt into different ip addresses right so it's checking all the ip addresses i got another alert and this one is for the second scam uh, that I'm doing as well. This is where our, our team starts investigations right away. So it, it would take a matter of minutes while we get the information and are able to create an investigation and see what's going on and stop the hacking right away. So we have successfully retrieved information about the scam. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is the phishing attack. Right. So I'm going to launch a phishing attack and for this i have 
this little tool right here. So the module is being initiated. So I'm listening for any possible victims that might go into the, the phishing attack. So now I'm here on the victim machine and so I'm going to launch my browser and I'm going to hit that URL. This is a typical Microsoft sign in. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put my email in here and a password, and then I'm going to try to sign in. It's not working. So I'm going to try to enter probably another password. Is that, oh, I forgot the password, so let's try something else. Obviously, because it's a phishing attack. And now from the hacker's perspective, you can see that I collected the passwords as I go, right? So this is how hackers do it. So they have a machine that is continuously collecting information from the victims. And now let's see if we're able to get that information in the MDR. There you go. Perfect. So right away, I got an email, right? And it says Rhino Phishing 365 possible social engineering attempt from our alerts dashboard. If I go into here, you'll see right away there is a phishing attempt. Now let's spice things up a little. So I'm going to go into my victim machine again. And now these are all serious, right? Scanning the network is very serious. A successful phishing attempt is very serious. And also a CNC it is extremely serious, right? So we are able to alert those. But how about those alerts that are not as serious, but they are important to alert on and monitor and then basically provide a report and then get the employees to comply with certain rules and infringements of those rules inside of a company. So I'm talking about things like Steam, for example, playing Steam games, TeamViewer. So I'm going to power up TeamViewer. I'm also going to power up a few other nasty tools like a Tor browser. Hackers usually use the Tor network because they want to keep anonymity and, uh, and, and also obfuscate all the attacks. So logging in with Tor and also going to do BitTorrent. So torrent there, but there's a whole bunch of other alerts that we can do. Uh, P2P plan, we can do um, you know, pornography, um, um, all of that stuff for clients. And all of these are reported usually at the end of the reporting cycle. So they're not investigations that we're raising, but we're telling the clients, hey, listen, you have to stop this because this is conducive to getting hacked. If I go into my email, you can see here that I already got an email about a Tor browser or Tor network being used inside of the network, which is not good. If I refresh my alerts, then you'll see that that's going on in there. So signatures here, I see uTorrent client being used, the torrent request, I see Tor here. And if I go down the page, corporate privacy violations, Steam player is being played in here. I got another email. Let's see what this one is. Uh, there you go, P2P network. So you can see that we are collecting all the alerts. And now these, we're going to create uh, a report on these, um, depending on the reporting cycle, which uh, you can see here, phishing uh, 365 user agents. So we are collecting all the signatures and all the information uh, related to this. Then we're going to be providing our clients with that information. From the internal side, then we can also see uh, the, the scanning that I'm doing. And, and so on. So yeah, so that's basically how um, how it works, how a MDR works. So that's it. And in the next video, I'm going to show you why it's important, why you should consider using an MDR solution and what are the pros and cons of using an MDR solution. And, uh, and then I'm going to give you a summary and I hope to see you in the next video. Cheers.